When you think of an underrated game, most people have an answer in mind before you even ask. And in my case, it would easily be Dragon's Dogma. I've played the game on and off since its release all the way back in 2012, and the recent announcement of its sequel has got me hot, bothered, and ready to play again. However, after playing for years and years, I was really struggling to find a way to challenge myself. I've killed countless enemies and beaten the game countless times with swords, magic, and even the literal finger of God. But upon stumbling onto the bloody knuckle ring, I started to wonder if beating the entire game from start to finish with only my fist was possible. It re-inspired me and I fell back in love with Dragon's Dogma all over again. And I hope it does the same for you. If you've played this game before, I encourage you, go back and play it again. It is time to revisit it. If you've never played it before, I hope I can convince you to at least check it out. Now strap in and let's see if I can beat Dragon's Dogma using only my fists. We start our adventure by creating our character. It would be in our best interest for our Arisen to be of a small stature, capable of quickly regenerating stamina and reducing our hitbox. But then my immersion would be broken. And without immersion, why even turn the game on in the first place? The dragon shows up and within seconds turns three generations of his cocks into ash. Now even though I look like I could punch clean through the face of a goblin, I'm actually doing almost no damage starting out. This damage scales with strength and your strength can increase by either leveling, wearing strength boosting equipment, juicing, or using augments. Now in reference to classes, not all level stats the same. The fighter class would get a larger boost to strength per level compared to the mage or strider. So until we get to Grand Soren, where we can switch to a warrior, we'll be playing as a fighter. The optimal leveling path gets a tad confusing, but we'll get into that more later on. The DLC starts you with some expensive armor and rings that I decided to sell. Our adventure would not be cheap, and this is just what we need to get off the ground. Speaking of off the ground, no pawns are allowed in the run except for carrying items in between my save files. We need to get to the DLC and obtain the one item that makes this run possible, the Bloody Knuckle Ring. This ring doubles your unarmed damage, and you can wear up to two of them. Now starting out, it really only doubles my damage from 4 to about 8, but this gets much, much better in the future. Before accessing the DLC, we need to beat our first monster and make our pawn, so we're off to the encampment. This first Cyclops fight is supposed to be a cakewalk. Luckily, the unarmed heavy attack does just enough to knock back the goblins and allow me to edge, I mean ledge them. Um, the ogre is largely uninterested in what's going on around him he is no longer enraged either we're gonna dodge that come over here he's gonna go for it again and then we're gonna start punching and hope this is enough jump again nope we're in trouble here not good let's see if we can get below nope he got me again god damn it he may get me this time Man, this damage is insufferable, like nearly impossible. Damn, he got me again. This guy can really catch people, I guess. Damn, he just keeps knocking me off. Damn it. My arm is getting tired from having to do this over and over. It would be in our best interest for our Arisen to be of a small stature. Oh no, that's not good. That's just really bad for me, actually. We've got the bow guy over there helping us just a little bit. Oh, he's falling. Okay, so we managed to knock him down. Okay, so he's going to do that. 
Gonna throw a little bit of a fit. And then we're gonna keep elbow dropping his eye. No, I actually died. Fuck. I died on the very first, like, enemy boss monster. Look at that. Now that's big damage. That's some big damage right there. We're gonna come in and just start kicking at them legs. He is gonna fall again if I have anything to say about it. And we will win this. Ooh! I'm getting too cocky, bro. I have to slow down. Oh, please, I'm begging you. Yes! <laughs> Jesus Christ, what a conundrum. It took a few tries, but we finally managed to bring him down and make our pawn. The objective was to make a pawn that would grab the attention of other online players so I could passively farm Rift Crystals. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. Before heading into the danger zone, we grab a few easy to complete missions. Now the DLC has a recommended level of 50, which we are nowhere even close to, but we just run right past everything. Once we arrive in the Duskmoon Tower, we speak to Barok, which completes one of our missions and snags us some free levels, and by proxy, more fist damage. Before moving on, we grab some new armor and curatives that will boost our XP gain. While here, we use the barrel glitch to snag a few important items. For those who are curious how the glitch works, when you set down a barrel in this game, it loses its collision, but only for a few seconds. When the collision turns back on, and you're standing in between it and a wall, it pushes your character straight through, allowing some very powerful gear early on. The real object we're after is this ring right here. When equipped with this, it will increase the amount of discipline earned by 50%. Discipline is used to level up your specific vocation, and most of the augments we're after are locked behind the higher tiers. This will help a substantial amount. Now the weapons we pick up obviously do nothing for us, but they sell for a ton of money. We also get a trophy jacket, one of the best strider armors in the game. We'll save this for later. Returning to the entrance, we purify a few pieces of gear we picked up along the way. This in turn completes another mission, and we grab some more levels. We aren't quite ready to obtain the bloody knuckle ring, so we return to Casardis and work our way through the story a bit more. Resting at the encampment, we find ourselves ambushed by a Hydra. Punching one of its heads off proves to be a tad more difficult than anticipated. Imagine punching the head off of a Hydra, am I right? This is not an insignificant amount of damage we're doing right now. Look at the stun that it's doing. I'm staggering, like, really well. We are going to try to use this to our advantage. Someone attack me. There we go. This is just not going anywhere. I don't think I'll ever be able to take this head off. Maybe severing isn't possible with blunt weapons? I don't... There we go. Look at that. With the Hydra head loaded up, it's time to move on to Grand Soren. This mission finds us guarding an ox that's carrying the Hydra head through a dangerous enemy-filled mountain. The She-Goat and her escorts are as useless as they look, and after dispatching our very first group of enemies, the ox is already at half health. I won't bore you with the details, most people know this mission is an absolute slog. Just know that the ox was on 1 HP the entire time, and ripping my fingernails off with pliers would have probably been more fun. Once we arrive at the capital, it's finally time to make the switch to the warrior vocation. We also obtain the level 1 augment Bastion that reduces physical damage when equipped. The warrior vocation has a passive that makes it more difficult to knock us off our feet. Since we're fighting everything with no pawns, this becomes a welcomed boon. This vocation also gets amazing stat boosts in strength, defense, and health with each level, making it the optimal vocation for a fist-only build when we aren't fighting bosses. With our new vocation equipped, it is finally time to obtain the Bloody Knuckle Ring. Now figuring out how to get my first of two copies was the biggest hurdle I had to figure out in order to make this run possible. The first option would be completing the mission Slumbering Dragon, which rewards the ring upon completion. But in order to even complete the quest, we need to first get a piece of armor or a weapon Dragonforged. 
And if we can't even kill a Cyclops that is already on the brink of death, we sure as hell aren't going to kill a dragon. Our second option was to farm and purify Bitter Black Gear level 3 and hope we get lucky. But the first opportunity to even obtain Gear level 3 is after you complete the entirety of the DLC the first time. Lastly, we could farm the Gear level 3 on my alt account, gift it to Holden's pawn, and have the pawn gift it to Holden, along with tons of Rift Crystals. This is the method we ultimately went with, but if we wanted a second copy of the ring in the future, we would have to obtain it through conventional means. I had already pre-farmed the gear, I just needed to give Donkey a ton of experience to bring back in the form of Rift Crystals. The easiest method of which is to kill Damon in both phases after consuming an XP boost. We quickly rocked Damon's shit and sent Donkey back with everything needed. Hello Donkey! Alright, here we are! A quick rest here should now give us a ton of RC and 10 of those gear level 3s. Look at this. Yes, 89,000 RC, bro, from two runs. That is fucking amazing. Yes, and 10 bitter black gear level 3. An unfamiliar foe. Nice. You've done so good, Donkey. I'm so proud of you. Okay, this is the big moment. We need all 11 of these. Out of one, we just need one bloody knuckle. Otherwise, I have to go back to the other file and do a shit ton of farming. So let's do it. Okay, not good. That's good, actually. Ring of Desiccation is good. Not a good start. Next one. Still not... Actually, that's not bad. Maximum stamina by 490 is pretty insane, but not what we're looking for. Magic Shieldsman, uh, Thunder Counter, Ice Counter, whatever. I don't use that. Not looking good so far. Let's fucking go! One, baby! And we're not even halfway through. One. Let's fucking go. All right, we need one more bloody knuckle to make this the pinnacle. Swordsman Ban, not bad. Both of those are actually really good. Ranger's Ban, that's okay. That's fine. That's actually really great, because Immolation's good. I don't know about Shadow Shackle. Come on. Stagger Power, not a big deal. Stone Wall. Oh, that's not bad. Come on, one more. No, okay. We still got one. Look at that. Out of all 11 of those, we only actually got one Bloody Knuckle. That is fucking huge, dude. Okay, withdraw. Where is it? There it is. Fuck yes, dude. With this massive milestone complete, we return to Grand Soren to work on the main story. Once in the catacombs, I test my damage against some zombies, only to realize I'm still not quite where I want to be. My strength is currently only at 132. Doubled, we're only doing 264 damage, which is considered normal damage by this stage of the game. Again, keep in mind, the lower level we are, the worse our damage will be. We'll focus on getting another bloody knuckle at a later time, but for now, this will have to do. We run into an ogre, and without a female pawn in my party, he has no reason to live. And there you go. It's that easy, people. <laughs> we cannot forget to grab the port crystal. That is unbelievably important. Do that, and then check this out. Fairy stone out. <laughs> Why would we run back up? I've been running back up my entire life for no fucking reason. All I had to do was port crystal. With this mission complete, we get access to worm hunting missions and level three of the warrior vocation. This unlocks an augment called ferocity. Okay. Look at all these cool- none of that matters. Here we are. Increases the lethality of your core skills. Can anyone in the class tell me what a core skill is? I'll answer it for you. A core skill is this. What? That is a core skill. So now my punches and kicks are stronger. Beautiful, isn't it? So we're moving on. We're gonna come up here and talk to 04 Nival. I wanna buy some stuff from you. First off, I wanna buy this many of that. And then that's pretty much it. Thanks, Fornival. 
It's been a pleasure, as per usual. Okay, so now we have a ridiculous amount of Conqueror's Periaps. Now, what do these do? Affects a single target and boosts strength. Stacks up to four times. Regarding the worm hunt, you only have to do two of these missions before your audience with the Duke. And the best two, in my opinion, are the decipher a text and route a monster infestation. Decipher a text just requires we go and meet the arisen that came before us, the dragon forged. On our way there, we drop off one of our two port crystals here at Deos Hill. With the first mission complete and ready to turn in, I figured I would grab some better armor before we take on the double cyclops waiting at the shadow fort. If you run all the way to the Great Wall encampment, even from the start of the game, you can purchase some pretty decent armor, assuming you have the gold. On the way there, we test our metal against some bandits and then eventually a cyclops. Where are you going, huh? Where are you going? What, you trying to run? You trying to run from the bull? Were you were you charging a shot just then? Is that a mage I hear? Get bullied, nerd! Bam! <laughs> Our damage is actually pretty good right now. Oh. Oh, you thought you were gonna do something there, huh? Are you doing big damage to me, big guy? Are you doing big damage? I am punching through your attacks, sir! You should be scared for your life! You too! What are you gonna do? I am the bull! <laughs> this is working so much better than I thought it would! Okay, Mr. Cyclops. So he should grab for me here in a second. And when he does, we're going to jump up and right back on to his face and we're gonna just start punching look at that stagger not totally happy with my damage i use my first of many parry apps are you sleeping open your eyes am i you know what i don't know why i didn't think to do this earlier this is why i bought these Bop! 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 Yes! Yes! Damage! Big damage! Come on, keep punching! One more! Yes! Fuck you, dude! A bit further up the way, we run into another Cyclops. If you can manage to lure it away from the bandits and knock a tusk off to enrage it, he'll simply run off the ledge. And now he should go just right off the edge. Ha <laughs> ha, yes! Look at that! Get predicted! Not much further now when we arrive at the encampment. This gold is burning a hole in my pocket, and Matthias is happy to lighten the load. We drop another port crystal here and return to Grand Soren to turn in our mission. It was time to take on the Shadow Fort. This normally is one of my favorite missions, but I truly had no idea how difficult it would be without any pawns. It felt like every few minutes I was being grabbed, thrown across the room, and stomped into the dirt. After using all of my parry apps, I managed to kill the first two Cyclops, and we just skipped the third one. Finish him already! Something you gotta- YOU MOTHERFUCKER! Come on! Oh my god, finally. Dude, I hated that so much. Come on, almost. A few more punches, bitch! And... Come on! Bah! No! What was that? <laughs> Die already! Oh. Well, I'm not gonna fight him the traditional way, because I'm sick of fighting the goddamn Cyclops. If we can knock him down, that could be big. Okay, hold on. Can we do this now? Let's try this. Well, he jumps out of that as if it's possible. I didn't even have to land the final blow. He did that himself. There we go. Nah, bro, you ain't going nowhere. Yes! Got his ass. Before I head home, I grab Salamet's Grimoire for a little extra quest XP and murder every single bandit in the safety of their own home. We gain a few more levels and move on to the Duke's missions. Oh my god! What is that? 
First, he would like us to prove whether or not our good friend Fornival is guilty of treason or simply a misunderstood businessman. His role in this run is too essential, so regardless, we ensure the trial goes smoothly. Fornival Frescobaldi, in the name of his grace, Duke Edmund Dragonsbane, the court hereby proclaims its verdict. Not guilty. Yes. You are Nice, nice, nice. For a bit more XP, we also quickly finish the side mission for Sir Dario, who gifts us with some upgrades to our armor. Valorian Helm. Valorian Plate. We could move on to the hunting expedition, but I wanted to finish off the warrior vocation so I could obtain a very powerful augment. One of the most efficient methods for farming your vocation levels before beating the game is to purchase some XP boosts from Fornival, place a port crystal outside of Grand Sorin, and farm the enemies outside. You would think killing bosses and enemies that award the most XP would be the most efficient, but without bogging you down in the details, just know it's faster to kill a large number of small enemies versus a small number of large enemies. Once everyone is dead, simply return to the inn and sleep until everything respawns. Now that our vocation is maxed out, we can buy one of the best augments that's sure to give us a massive boost in power, Clout. This augment gives a direct 20% increase to your strength, but we're not done yet. After you take out the griffin, the rest of the story tends to wrap up pretty quick, and I wanted to ensure I had the majority of my power-ups before then. Which means, it's time to get our last bloody knuckle ring. Again, we can wear two at the same time, essentially doubling and doubling again our fist damage. This is truly where it starts to get broken. The only realistic way I could get another copy was to Dragonforge something, level it up, and complete the mission Slumbering Promise. Dragon forging, of course, means I need to kill a dragon, which of course means we need to gear up and switch classes. The Strider gets a 30% boost to damage while clinging to a target, and since almost all boss fights involve clinging to a target, it makes the Strider the perfect choice for not only this occasion but all future boss fights. We make sure to use the trophy jacket we grabbed earlier on, and Jesus does it look stupid, but we will need it to ensure the dragon doesn't kill us. Now. Dragon forging armor is incredibly rare if you beat a lowly dragon such as a drake, but the odds increase the higher your armor's been upgraded. A few errands later, and we've got most of our armor leveled. It's time to take on the drake. This fight was much harder than I had predicted. The pure size of my character kept getting him pushed through the drake's body and onto his back every single time he'd do this little shake. The woods are also filled with an insane amount of goblins that have to be cleared out every time I try the fight again. My only saving grace was that my damage wasn't bad. With a little bit of luck and learning the dragon's moveset, we eventually killed the drake. Oh, tell me at least one thing. Nothing got Dragon Forged, dude. Look at this. Please, I so badly need, so, 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 so badly need. I just need. There we go. Dragon Forged, yes. What got Dragon Forged? I got a couple levels out of that, actually, which is awesome. Hinterland Waste Guard, okay. Simply getting the armor Dragon Forged doesn't complete the mission. We still need to upgrade it. The Hinterland Waste Guard is what caught the upgrade, and that requires four Lizard Scale Pelts, which can only be obtained in Bitter Black Isle from Giant Saurians. Thankfully, the drop chance is incredibly low, so I get to suffer some more. You actually only need one pelt. You can get the remainders by creating forgeries at the Black Cat. Finally, after all of this struggle and strife, we're ready to obtain our last copy of the Bloody Knuckle Ring. Take this and allow us to complete the fucking mission. Yes, dude. Yes. Oh my god. Look at this. Fuck you, Ring of Perseverance. Two Bloody Knuckles. Our barehanded fighting is now going to be leagues better. Let's just go ahead and try to take this for a quick test run. See how the damage looks. Well, that's already a great 
thing. Oh, look at that, though. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's viable. Oh my god, look at this. Look at this. Who are you fucking with, huh? Who are you? Did we just one phase a cockatrice? Dear god. We just one phase a cockatrice. Content with my damage, we move on to the griffin boss fight. Come on, punch, 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 punch. Just get punching. Punch, punch. Just keep punching, you son of a bitch. Don't stop. Look at that damage. Big damage. Big damage. Straight on the head. Big head damage. No, you son of a bitch. You didn't help me. You made things worse. You knocked me off the motherfucker. There we go. That actually does help a lot. Thank you. All right. Let's go beat his ass. Come on. Punch. Yep. Okay. Nice. With this mission complete, we have only a few left before the end of the game. The Worm King's ring quest was completed almost as fast as it started. Once his skeletons are dead, he can't teleport, and he goes down in one hit. <laughs> Get shit on, kiddo! Pride before a fall was obviously easy as well, and after being rewarded by the Duke himself, we can move on to the last few missions. But before we fight Grigori, I wanted to finish off my build. That way, we're at maximum power when we finally meet on the battlefield. We switch our class to Assassin, who gets the highest amount of strength per level, and we begin farming Bitter Black Isle. The main objective was to get as many levels as we could and farm a ton of armor level two. We started with the Gazer boss fight. If you stand on this staircase and turn away from him, he can't really hurt you. And once he starts his tentacle attack, it's already over. Thank you. And then this is our opportunity. I know I don't have enough knockdown really, but look at that damage. That is not an insignificant amount of damage. And if nothing wears off, and let's go ahead and use this. Bam, and dead. It was actually too easy, by the way. Next was the Dark Bishop. This was actually a pretty tough boss fight, but only because that giant holy AoE he does kills you in just a few seconds. After a few attempts, we put him down for good. It's so close. I think the mage is going to get out here, though. Yes! Yes! Okay. Big, 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 big. I don't know where I am. Right here. Oh, right as it went out. I mean, after this, I'm fucking so done for. Come on. Please. Oh, my God. I did it. Hold on. Pilgrim's Charm. Does this stack, I wonder? Probably not. Yes! Yes! Yes, that feels so good, dude. With the entirety of the pre daemon world open, I also farmed a few novelty level 3, which would give us some augments to further boost our power. Rarify. Come on, don't let me down here. Adhesion! <gasps> oh! Dude! Yes! Holy shit, that's huge. So, I mean, I know this, I know we're gonna have to do like way more farming than this. It would be kind of rare for us to actually get it. But again, we're looking for, I think, adhesion, scroll of adhesion. Come on. Oh, yes, it was the first one. Lastly, we farmed all of our assassin vocation to get the augment autonomy, which gives us 20% more strength when we have no pawns. So here's the final build. To show how broken this build can actually be, we'll be fighting Grigori in our Jester outfit. I must say that even though this isn't technically the final boss, it's absolutely my favorite out of all the games I've played. It's incredibly cinematic, and the entire story leads up to this one battle, making its victory feel incredibly grandiose and rewarding. We struggled for a bit while he flew around the boss room, but the second he touched down, it was game over. Yep. He actually may just be dead here. Yeah, he's dead. Later. <laughs> Damon was much of the same. It was difficult at first to get him to hold still without knocking us off, but as soon as he's down two health bars, he goes for his vortex attack. And that's the perfect opening to finish him off. Okay, so we're gonna use Liquid Vim now. Because we don't want to get knocked off. We're going to use the rest of our buffs. Man, his his second phase is going to be fucking impossible too. Not having any pawns here. 
forgot what it was like playing as a melee build, man. Look at how much damage that's doing, though. Every two hits is like a health bar and a half. Look, he's dead. And finally, damn. We of course went back through the DLC again to fight him in both phases. Second phase is the same tactic. Get him to his vortex attack and use that as an opening to deal all the damage. This is good. He's fucking stuck in this loop for some reason, but. Okay, so we're gonna use a liquid vim here. Cause he's gonna start sucking us off. So the longer he tries to do this little effect, the more time I have to sit here and wail on him. Cause he'll still go into his defensive phase even if I don't get caught in all the bullshit. So this is, this is really good for us. Okay, so it's time to pop everything again. Look at that damage, that's much better. I think we're, yep, we got him. We fucking got you, you son of a bitch. Come on. Hey, one, two, let's go ahead and use it. And bam, yes! Yes, defeat Damon in his true form, mission complete. The only enemy left is God. Get him. Bop! Oh, that was fucking awesome! That was so cinematic. I mentioned it at the beginning, but this run truly reignited my love for this game all over again. And I encourage all of you Dragon's Dogma lovers to find a fun and unique way to beat the game yourselves. Well, look who made it to the end of the video, you precious, amazing, kind human. Uh, while you're here, if you enjoyed your time spent, uh, we would sincerely appreciate a thumbs up, a like on the video. If you want to see more like this in the future, of course, drop a subscribe. And as always, a quick shout out to our members, our amazing, loving members. Uh, members get an extra upload each and every week, as well as a ton of other perks. If you are interested in becoming a member, please just check the description. All the details are in there. We'll see you all next time. Later. Later.